if you have a presentation. Uh, so uh, just a few words uh, about my uh, multi-affiliation. Uh, multi so uh, my permanent position in the National Academy of Sciences in Ukraine, in the main astronomical observatory. But I spent in the last 10 years some part time in also in Chinese Academy of Sciences in the National Astronomical Observatory uh, of China and also in uh, Heidelberg University in Astromission Rechner Institute. So this is why you see all this free nice logo in my presentation. So here is just a free institution website. I don't want to uh, put too much time on it. So um, first in one slide I tried to show my collaborators and grants which we have uh, after I would like to put your attention in 10-15 minutes about the hardware so this is slightly different from what we have in the last two days it was not too many talks which connected to the hardware uh, and of course software what we use on this uh, GPU clusters mainly GPU clusters but not only in all the three places in China Germany and also in Ukraine and in the last 20 minutes 25 minutes I try to uh, show you the application or uh, cluster physical results which we get in the last few years on uh, these systems uh, in a galactic center galactic merger simulation and also some uh, very promising new star cluster simulations uh, so this is my collaborators so my main collaborators in the last past 10 years, 10 plus years, is Rania Spurzam from, uh, no, he has double affiliation also from NAOC Beijing and Astromission Rechner Institute Heidelberg University. And also a list of other peoples from Astromission Rechner Institute, Andreas Manuel uh, from Switzerland, from Zurich, Lucio Meyer, from Pakistan, Fazil Khan, who is our long collaborator, Keigo Nitadori from Japan, which we constantly work on a code in the last 10 years roughly. Uh, some students from uh, Beijing or student or postdocs. Uh, Jochai from Budapest, Mirek and Abbas from Warsaw and uh, my local collaborator in Kiev, Alexander, Igor and Margarita. Um, uh, so main well, two main sources in the past years uh, which we use. Uh, it was the so-called Silk Road project in uh, National Astronomical Observatory in China and also a President International Fellowship which I have in the last uh, few years in uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And in Germany we are constantly working in this uh, uh, so-called special scheme SFB in German 881 uh, which was founded by the German Science Foundation DFG uh, under the name of the Milky Way system. So this was the last uh, four years. And uh, basically the money and all the Hardware is going for these three clusters in, uh, in uh, National Astronomical in China, in Beijing, in uh, Germany, and also in Kiev. So now the formal stuff is done, so I can concentrate on the, uh, on, on the GPU. So um, I would like to show this nice slides. Uh, this is not a recent one, and I explain why not a recent one. So um <coughs> usually every twice per year, the big computer players come together and have create a so-called top 500 list and this was what's happened also in June 2013 so it's usually June and November where the two list is coming out uh, and this was basically the last list which is show the nice uh, performance grow which uh, we see in the last 30 years basically and uh, you see it was everything is fine in a log scale, log lin scale. Uh, the top computers scale it very well and everything going good. Uh, actually at this time uh, already the Tianhe 2, the Milky Way computer in China get the first place. Uh, the Titan in Oak Ridge National Laboratory was the second. A K computer in China was also in a, uh, oh sorry, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, of course, Japan, of course. Right. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we need to cut it somewhere in the record. <laughs> so, <coughs> now it's a fresh top 500 list. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, November, yeah, November 2017. So it should be just a just few days ago. 
Uh, again, again, players, uh, again, China. So now we're first and the second position occupied by Chinese systems. Surprisingly, the new Swiss system, the Peace Diant, show up. And uh, after the big upgrade, they move to the new Pascal uh, cards, GPUs. They get the third position in the list. Uh, the Titan is the, the biggest American system is pushed down to uh, number five, but still in the top five. So, uh, but when you look at the performance plot, the same performance plot as it was before, yeah? so this was in 2013, so roughly five years ago, a little bit less, you see the break. Yeah? So this is what exactly happened. So no, it's not anymore scaled like it was. So this is, a, this is a big changes, and the computer industry is also faced on, but in the last five years, we basically move out from this so-called Moore law. So the Moore law is actually connected not to speed, but the number of transistors per square foot or inch or whatever. Uh, but basically this, this law, which was introduced in the 70s, working very fine. And, and this is where this growing is basically coming. Yeah? So this is, a, this is a summed up performance. This is a top system. And this is a lowest system. So you see the summed up performance is basically coming down. And, and instead of having a steady grow, yeah, so this was a top 500 trend and this was a Moore low, now we are falling down. Yeah, so basically after this 2013, we see this uh, kind of uh, end of the Moore low era, basically. So we need some kind of new design, new hybrid architecture. Please see much. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, y probably you are the only person <laughs> in the room who really understand why it's not fair. But, um, so, I, I talking about the uh, overall trend, let's say, yeah? And the overall trend was already clear, let's say, 10 years ago. But people just already know what, yes, it's been a Moore law. It's at some point is ended because your crystal is cannot be, I don't know, one nanometer large or whatever. So, the technology is also uh, stops at some level. So it was clear that it's, you need some kind of new architecture, new hybrid thinking to, to move, push forward the, the productivity. Uh, I don't want to go here in detail. So it's also have two more problems uh, with, uh, with this high performance computing and uh, especially in astrophysical high performance computing. So one of the big problem is a so-called efficiency gap between the uh, reported top 500 nice numbers here and the real application what you use yeah, so so this gap is in, in the years it's become larger and larger um, so it's mean what the, so you also need to to always have a good software development or at least uh, you need to always update a little bit your software to be on the same good performance level as the hardware. Yeah. Uh, and also the second problem is actually the, the electricity. So the largest systems now is using uh, uh, like, a, like a small city or you need a nuclear power plant to running the system like this uh, And this is also a problem in the sense of ecology. So now coming to the numerical astrophysics. And this is, a, uh, I, I think this is the first uh, person who really do astrophysical, numerical astrophysical simulation. It was in 1941, without any computers. Yeah. And this was a, actually this was a hardware accelerated numerical astrophysics. Yeah, so it's really, really. And they using the lumps, lamps, yeah, just a bulb. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly how much it was, maybe something like 200 or whatever. 74, yeah, okay. So, uh, so of course, not only lamps, but they also need a detector, the galvanometer, which measuring the, uh, the light, the, 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 the intensity of the light. And the whole idea was that, uh, of course, the gravity of the light is proportional to one over r square. And if you put in a big desk a lot of lamps, yeah, in principle, oops, in principle, if you're measuring the intensity in some of the points, uh, this intensity proportional to 1 over r square, like a force. So you just need to put your uh, detectors in a clever way, and you can get the uh, two projection of the forces. 
and do the simulation. And you need, of course, some PhD student, maybe five, four PhD students who are running away and just moving your lamps according to the intensity of the light. So, uh, so Eric Holmberg was the guys who invent this technique. Uh, I don't know after who use it, but uh, it's need roughly 30 years from this picture, which was already in 1941, uh, to this historical tumor paper in 1972, when we do the same uh, exercise, but already on a real computer and running and try to reproduce this nice mouse galaxy uh, and try to show how, uh, how, this, how this interaction is, is working between the galaxies. Okay, so now we come back to the nowadays. And uh, uh, so here I just want to show or want to put your attention in two points. So one of them is where we started. So it was a historical paper. Uh, I think Simos at this time was still in Amsterdam, yes? Yes. So his historical paper was, I think, in the uh, mid of 2007, something like April or May. Yeah, okay, doesn't matter. So it was a long time ago, yes. So it's roughly 10 years ago, and we should, we should make some celebration, because this was, this was a real first time ever when the GPU was used properly, not with some kind of uh, very strange scheme using the colors and shaders and, and blah, 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 but using a real CUDA as a CPU, some kind of analog of the CPU cores. And uh, first time we show what really this uh, gaming card, which was a GeForce 8800 GTX, can be very effectively used and very effectively used as a replacement of uh, our grape card, which cost at this time something like two, three thousand dollars, and this card is cost maybe two hundred. Yeah, so the price performance difference was a factor of 20 at least. Uh, so, and nowadays, this is one of the latest, latest cards. This is a Pascal analog of. Uh, uh, this uh, GeForce 1080 Titanium. So you see we get roughly a factor of 20 in a number of cores, uh, not too much in a frequency, roughly again a factor of 20 in a memory in the cards. So basically in 10 years we get this factor of 20 speed up uh, on a GPU technique. So this is just again the same plot from NVIDIA where the different architectures is shown. So this is again some advertisement this is again in a some kind of historical plot where first time people show what for astrophysical simulation, astrophysical and body simulation, we can get a factor of uh, plus 100. Uh, so here I don't want to go into detail, but uh, I just want to point your attention, but not all the codes can be easily ported to a GPU. Uh, not all the code can be effectively ported to a GPU. So it, of course, have some, uh, have some good candidates and one of the best one is with the particle uh, uh, based n body codes where the complexity of a problem or the number of floating point operation is roughly proportional to m time n's. Uh, some other technique like FFT or some other methods or particle mesh methods can be also ported to a GPU but maybe it's not a such a good uh, uh, performance. So basically it's always depend on how, uh, how arithmetically intense your your application. So for the ends, for the for this um, n-body direct particle simulation, this is one of the best astrophysical example uh, for the speed up on the GPU. So this is just the architecture, which is just showing with no magic. So it means clear, but it just come from the large number of cores which we have working in the same frequency. You need to know some some scheme, or you need to organize some clever way to feeding your cores, your threads on the GPU always. And this is basically the main task of the programmers nowadays to effectively use the GPUs. Um, so a breakthrough, a real breakthrough, uh, it's really come when uh, the CUDA become available. Uh, the NVIDIA really make a nice move when uh, freely offer the CUDA as a programming platform. Uh, CUDA, it's a computer unified device architecture. So uh, this is a some kind of, so many people think it's just a compiler basically, just a language. It's very close to the C language, uh, which you can use to compile your code. 
And after running instead of a CPU, you can run it on your GPU probably. Your notebook is also have some graphic processor units, so they can use it parallel or together. So this is basically the idea. And, and they, they put it freely available, and uh, really it was a, was a big step, and it's a nice offer. And I think this was one of the reasons why the paper, Simos paper in 2007 was so good, because they already used the CUDA and write this nice emulation library uh, for the grapes. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So it's just the left side. This is a, I don't remember what it is actually. Ah, it's just adding two, two matrices, A plus B and getting the C matrices, yes? So this is how it looks like a standard C program and this is how it looks like the new CUDA program. So basically if somebody know the C notations or language, it's very easy to uh, get in a CUDA and it's not a big problem. I never actually learning any courses or whatever in CUDA, I just, you know, on a fly, you can learn it. So, I skip these nice images of historical clusters and historical me in a different times. So this was the first clusters in Heidelberg University in Mannheim and uh, also in Ari. This is a cluster in Kiev. Uh, this is a already non-existing cluster in, in Hydra cluster in, um, in Heidelberg. This is also a Kepler cluster, which is not exist in the same form already because we already changed it. Uh, so I stop here. So this is Rainer Pursum, my collaborator, just to show him. And it was uh, the Milky Way cluster in Ulich, which was specially designed under this SFB program. And we very effectively use it, I think, four years. And uh, now it's already disassembled and we move the components to the Heidelberg University. So this is a Lauhu cluster in Beijing. And this is how it looks like and some parameter. And the initial cost was roughly five million. Uh, Chinese RMB, which we spent to build the system. And uh, recently we add uh, 1.2 million RMB in 2013 and significantly upgrade the system and putting a new uh, GPUs on it. This was the largest system which uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences have. This was in the Institute of Process Engineering. Uh, it was 370 node and each node have six GPU cards. So this was a real beast at this time nowadays of course it's, I, th I think it's even not running now so it's so so slow or so underperformed that people just don't use it so now we go quickly to the software uh, so uh, I really don't have time to do all the uh, all the review of all the different techniques but uh, I just want to pay most attention to the direct and the simulations. Uh, so this is, uh, I think we should all mention Sverre Arset as a father of all this NBODY code, starting from NBODY1 to NBODY6++, uh, which we nowadays use in the different version of this NBODY code. Uh, I also need to, uh, so this is, this is Sverre homepage where you can get all the versions of NBODY. Uh, for the NBODY 6++, it's much better to ask me or Reiner, and you can get a, a better updated version uh, of this code. Um, I also need to mention, or uh, I'd like to mention, the uh, new project Amuse, which is well, not so new, but at least a few, few years from now. And uh, uh, this is also a nice alternative of this Sphere. Uh, uh, simple NBODY 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 codes uh, where you can combine different codes in a higher level uh, and, and using basically the, the, the codes in a, in a way like external libraries when you want to collect them you can make an interaction between a code and uh, do many many nice things uh, in, uh, in astrophysical simulation. So uh, the basic idea is when you have basically endpoint masses at some time, t old positions, velocities, and you want to get the new positions and velocities at some time, t old plus delta t. And the core of this problem is a gravity or self gravity of this point. And basically, if you uh, like to put it like a matrixes, I always like this kind of uh, images, how it looks like. This is a standard Fortran code when we just calculate this. Uh, double sum, so the problem is this double summation, you need to have n times uh, n minus 1 interaction. 
uh, this is how it looks like the same code this is a Fortran this is a C code of a sequence of a C code between the two particles direction uh, it's total you see it's roughly 20 floating point operation of CUDA nowadays uh, so uh, the results which I present it's mainly done with two different codes one of them is a so-called phi grape or phi GPU code nowadays it's uh, using an individual hierarchy or individual block time step and we basically write it uh, so so I write it from scratch uh, starting from 2004 uh, when I was in Rochester with David Merritt and it was a set of papers uh, which we use for galactic center simulation using this phi grape phi GPU code and uh, uh, the code paper was done uh, mainly with Stefan Harfst at 2007 where we present uh, and put the publicly available place uh, the code version uh, the recent development I mean recent it's only the last two years basically three years um, we get the nbody 6 plus plus version uh, of uh, GPU accelerated nbody 6 plus plus version using the so-called Ahmad Cohen neighbor scheme uh, so here it's have a great potential and great speed up uh, coming from the fact that you don't really need to calculate all the interaction between all the particles but you divide the forces for so-called regular and irregular forces and you need in every time step update basically only the irregular forces which come from the neighbors particles from the some neighbors here and for the regular forces you need to get the update only a uh, uh, much long longer time step so this is basically where the uh, speed up is come okay so this is just a communication scene this is how it looks like the nbody 6 Ahmad Cohen neighbor scene this is a, from the presentation of uh, Long Wang uh, and you see but basically it's quite complex and have many interaction uh, and uh, so this is why it take long time to develop such a code so um, originally so we, we all come from the from a place where we already use some accelerators and the main accelerator was is a grape this time uh, this is a nice very nice uh, machine or, or not really machine it was a some kind of hardware um, uh, which we have uh, from Japan from June Makino I think they developed it from beginning of 80s something like 82 83 something like we can after have a lot of version of the grape uh, nowadays of course we all forget it and now instead of this accelerator we're using GPU or all the different versions uh, all accelerator libraries SSE SSE2 AVX uh, on the CPUs or the now nice new Phi Xeon uh, chips and also actually on a CPU part we also make uh, big changes so the new nbody 6 uh, plus plus effectively can use the AVX instruction on a CPU for irregular force calculation and let's say the GPU on a regular force calculation so nowadays everything become very complex as it should probably okay so just one remark about the, so why we need such a intelligent or such a complex codes one of the reason is the two time scales one of the spatial time scales or a resolution what you need to have and I here just plot the cumulative number of particles for very simple initial plumber conditions yeah, so which is one of the easiest um, and just show which kind of, of, of distances of which kind of resolution you need and you immediately see what you need something like six order uh, to resolve the, the resolution and if you're looking for the time stepping and uh, this is an individual time step scheme and the, and the, and the histogram of a different individual time step for a different time step so you see what also you need something like six order even seven order uh, in a time step to resolve so this basically the problem so when you combine it you need something like six order in, uh, in, 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 in resolution in a coordinates and also need six seven order resolution in a time um, so this is uh, this is one of the code paper which we have in one of this uh, high performance computer conferences and uh, here I, sh I show the different part of the codes what is done on a GPU basically on a GPU you just have this uh, force calculation determination uh, also some related stuff for the GPU so we need to sending the data getting back the data and so and so uh, something which is connected to the network communication 
and something which is still connected to the uh, CPU. So uh, we usually try to make some performance model and after when we have a performance model uh, we try to fit the parameters and getting a result. So uh, usually in such a big large cluster simulations when we have many particles, many nodes, uh, we always need to think about some kind of optimum number of usage and this is unavoidably always happens. So the problem size you always need to fit with, uh, uh, with your hardware uh, capabilities. Uh, and this is what basically this plot is show. So this is one of the performance plots which we did back to 2011 when we run the large system up to I think 6 million if I remember correctly on a mole 8.5 cluster on Institute of Process Engineering. Uh, so basically what, what you can just remember from here, so uh, the, the maximum performance per card which you can reach in such a regime is roughly was, you see, 500 gigaflops per card. Yeah, so this is, was our prediction for the TNH. One cluster, uh, this was the same performance plot on an old piece diant when they have only this K20 cards. This is the same on a Titan cluster in Oak Ridge. So it's actually a very nice piece of work where we uh, simultaneously use almost 3 million cores to running the big simulation and getting a very good performance. Uh, but if you see, it's basically the, the limiting, the performance limited always with, uh, uh, with uh, one card performance. So at this time it was roughly 1.5 uh, teraflops per card. So this was what we get. And this is a new result. I have an opportunity a few weeks ago to testing a new piece diant. Um, uh, we need to submit the next application and uh, the, the, the admins allow us first to testing the code to show what, uh, which kind of performance we can expect and how many nodes we can reserve for the runs. And I get a new performance and in a new Pascal cards we get roughly 5.5 teraflops per card. So which is up roughly the factor of uh, free speed up compared to the old K20 card. So this is a very nice result. This is just a timing. Okay, I skip this plot. Uh, this is an NBODY 6 performance plots, which is also not easy. I here just want to say that uh, the performance plot, what we usually plot, uh, assuming what we have a single stars, but in NBODY 6, if you are the binaries, you immediately see the complexity of the problem. And instead of these nice curves, yeah, which is falling down, uh, which means when you get more and more nodes, even if you add 5% or 10% binaries, uh, you get much more shallow uh, performance curves. So it means that binaries really slow down your simulation uh, in a big factor. Yeah. So now I want to mention Yochai Marion code, uh, which is a, some kind of nice combination you already show a poster yesterday, uh, so which is a nice combination of his ETIC code, which is a STF code or some kind of uh, uh, field code, uh, with a grape or GPU integrator with uh, five grape five GPU, and uh, making a combined scheme. From the right side is just one application where we run, I think, something like six hundred thousand particles, and this is some uh, disk particles. Uh, inside this complex uh, system. Okay, going to the astrophysical result. I very quickly just show this very nice animation which I like very much. Yeah, so this is, for me it was the first real evidence of a black hole existence and uh, I think it was a absolutely fantastic job but uh, the people can manage it and, and, and get this nice picture. So, uh, in other galaxies, again, we believe what the black holes exist, or almost in all the galaxies it exists. We know what the galaxies collide. If we go back, again a nice slide, thank you. Uh, I grab it somewhere from the internet, so I don't really know <laughs> where it's come from. Yeah. Um, so if we believe for this uh, merging simulation in, or in a million year run or whatever cosmological run, and we assume what we have a black holes in the galaxies, in this case, you inevitably have this black hole merging and sometimes you get two black holes, sometimes you get triples, uh, sometimes you merge it. So this is a nice example. This is a local example of uh, some, some black holes or double black holes which we can observe. Uh, this is back in 10 years when we first start to look 
in really high particle number uh, the problem of this uh, hardening of uh, uh, black holes and this was this 2006 paper when we show what basically using the triaxiality or some kind of triaxial structure together with rotation we can get in an independent hardening which was a very nice result uh, at this time okay so I just want to show so here again this famous plot and uh, I borrow it from Li Shu from National Astronomical Observatory in China he liked the X as many Chinese people I also like the X so and uh, this is his uh, I, I don't know where his where he got this idea to make it probably during a breakfast I, I think so so the idea is that you have two two black holes two X sometimes they can come together yeah, make it closer and uh, at some point due to the gravitational radiation they can merge and you get basically one big X okay so, uh, so this is a modification of a code which we did for such a uh, task so we have a standard n body code where we uh, have actually different orders of integration I didn't mention but the 5 GPU can work with a 4 order 6 order and 8 order hermit scheme so this is thanks to Keigo who originally have this very nice hermit integration scheme for the different orders uh, and uh, for the black hole so with these two red particles we are adding the post-Newtonian formalism so all the rest of the particles is interact with the Newtonian gravity but for the black hole black hole interaction we're using the uh, post-Newtonian formalism up to uh, 1 over uh, so, so 1 over C in a 7 order so it's a PN three and a half term yeah so I just skip here we also add the spin spin orbit spin spin interaction so you get also a 1.5 uh, extra odd to the 2 and extra odd to the 2.5 terms too this is how it looks like the equations quite complex no need to read it this is just a exercise how you can calculate the waveforms this is just a very old uh, Peter's paper about the, um, the hardening the gravitational wave hardening and this is just one test example how we testing in one of our paper and now we come for this one two three four five uh, one slide yeah uh, one slide for each of these tasks so the first one is uh, galaxy merging cosmological simulation so this is what we did with uh, Lucio Meyer group in the past uh, five years roughly and uh, recently in the last year we did a even larger simulation so this was an older simulation back to 2012 when we use uh, I think it was something like uh, 3 million particles yeah so this was at this time this was the largest direct particle and particle simulations and we get the cosmological initial condition or merging initial conditions from Lucio group from Zurich and after we redo the simulation using uh, uh, using our post-Newtonian uh, binary black hole code and get the merger so we uh, from roughly kiloparsec resolution we come down to 0.9 milliparsec resolution and we estimate what will be the merging time uh, in this system uh, yeah dark matter the Lucio simulation contain also gas and uh, stars and star formation even and accretion to a black hole but when we get from him the data so first of all the gas it already was was a minor fraction something like two percent so we just ignore the gas we just replace it a similar mass dark matter particles or, or n body particles or whatever <coughs> and um, also you have a mass spectrum naturally so because all the particles have a different uh, uh, different masses and uh, uh, different compositions yeah so we have basically the star particle dark matter particle and black hole particles so this was a free sort of particles mm -hmm. No, we can do also multiple mergers. We even have a triple black hole mergers. So, so we, we can do it. The only point is what we use. So Alberto, Alberto is not, ah, Alberto. So, uh, but we use in a way as Alberto described. So when, when you have a three black holes, you're basically using a, uh, interaction one to two, two to three, one to three, using a post-Newtonian, but this is not really the true uh, free body uh, Hamiltonian. Yeah, so this is just some kind of uh, uh, um, simple version of a, of a post-Newtonian interaction. 
Yeah, which probably works fine, but again, so it's always depend on up to this moment you want to run it. So this was a uh, last, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. One to one. Yes. 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 Um, so I don't remember from my head for the six million particle simulation what was a uh, what was a mass function slope or whatever, but uh, so this 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 is this kind of star particles is anyway uh, some artificial particles which you create from a huge lump of gas and so so this is a um, so called cartoon type of star formation which you can have in this cosmological one. Yeah, so we just converted so when when. So whatever Lucio say what this is a star particle, we treat it as a star particle. So it's, it's a star particle yes, or ten thousand or three thousand or whatever. In yes, in an envelope code, yes. So we just did one by one. The only things that we don't do, we usually cutting the central part. So instead of having all these nice objects around, uh, that three point five, we just make a sampling and, and getting the most important central kiloparsec or so. And, and rare start the simulation from this point with uh, higher resolution. Yeah, so this was. The simulation is basically ended when the two black holes merge. So we don't have a step, the next step, when you should add the recall. Yeah. So we, we can add, yeah, but we just stop the simulation when the two guys is merged. Uh, so this is, was uh, this point, and we get a pretty short pretty short merging time uh, so it was of roughly 30 million years in this example and uh, so from from few kiloparsec you see you come back to this milliparsec scale when you can merge it and uh, the main point was what what uh, so you, you need to have a zero softening of course yeah instead of have whatever even a five parsec softening it's already make you a stalling problem yeah? so this is what okay fine Okay, so this is this point. I think I have no real time to go for all of this. Maybe just showing this nice plot, which Alberto helped me in few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, I fight a lot in Beijing to get this nice plot, and this is why I want to show it. So this is our recent simulation where we're modeling three different uh, kind of merger with different uh, merging Delen profiles and uh, with the different masses, and the analog was something like a Milky Way, M31 and M87, and uh, we managed to get this uh, nice merging and getting in a, uh, and showing what we basically come to the LISA frequency very easy, and we get the uh, proper amplitudes here, so it was not a not an easy task to get it. So I just forget about this. Maybe at one point I want to mention our ongoing big simulations uh, you see the parameter space is huge when you have uh, binary black hole, galaxy, and star cluster, which is falling in the center. Um, so this is what we do with Manuel, Manuel Erka uh, from Heidelberg. And one of the side projects or the future project of this result is will be the, our new galaxy formation, in the sense that we merge with Andromeda. So this is, I think, the seven giga year from now picture, how it should look like according to NASA. Hopefully, yes. But so, and, and uh, we already start some simulation when we want to see how our two black holes in this new object merge. So I, I think it's even have a name of this new galaxy. Mik Miko yes, exactly. Thank you. Sim horrible name. Yes, you are, you're right. Absolutely horrible name, but, <laughs> but, but yeah. OK, so I just want to make this point. Uh, Tidal disruption event, which we have, and here it's depending on the orbits. Uh, this is our ongoing paper, which is still on the refereeing process. I just want to say what this nice 5 over 3, minus 5 over 3, uh, it only works when you have a parabolic orbit. If you have different orbits, you get a different uh, 
time uh, um, time dependence of uh, of the mass falling back. So please just come after the actually. So here is nice plots which is showing this. Okay, and uh, just finally show one more plot. I hopefully still have some time. Uh, so this is our famous dragon simulation which we passed in the, uh, last year. And here is a black hole subsystem in a star cluster. So this was a uh, four different star cluster in different places, different parameters. And uh, using this simulation, we extract the information for all of the black holes which we have. Here we have a kick. And um, after the kick, so we roughly have, actually this is where Long One getting a bottle of whiskey from Douglas Haggy hand for winning this nice prize. I don't remember 20 or 25 years ago, Douglas Haggy offered an expensive bottle of scotch if somebody do a real star cluster simulation with good enough resolution and uh, so, and we manage it finally. So it's take only 20 years. <laughs> okay. Including binaries. <laughs> yes. Actually, including primary binaries and including also the forming binaries. So it was a full. But it, was the, the, it was only, if I remember correctly, I think it was only 5% the, the initial binaries amount, so it's not big. Yeah. Uh, so this is the parameters. Uh, uh, I would like to have a much less half mass radius, but this is what we can have with the current technique back to a few years. So here is the black hole subsystem. And uh, if you see it, we roughly have this 1,600 uh, black holes, which is forming in a system from one million. Yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, after the kick, we get something like 500 or so, which is still there. So this is a kick prescription. This is how it looks like. And we select from this uh, from this uh, binary black hole system roughly 20, which was more promising. Uh, and here is one of them, which have a nice eccentricity. I don't see where it is. Eccentricity somewhere. Okay, oh, here it is, eccentricity, 0 0.9919, so. And also, this is one astronomical unit separation, so this is why only 10 million years you need to get the, uh, get the gravitational wave merging. So, and we modeling it, we're getting the amplitudes, we're getting a, a time frequency uh, domain, so this is what the observers can see, and also we add here artificially the spin, and we see which kind of differences you can have uh, if you have no spin merging. This is when you have a top-top spin. So a spin is oriented in an angular momentum of a, of a binary. And this is if you have a, a, a up orientation. So where the two spins is uh, oriented down compared to angular momentum. So this is basically the, uh, my final slide. which I want to show, and, 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 and this is a recent ongoing work which we try to do there and reproduce this gravitational wave uh, merging signal. Okay, thank you. And this is my conclusion.